Hey guys, this is Ginger. I am here with Robin Reeder, who is a former student of mine, and she has graciously agreed to um, come on here and answer a few questions about her experience of going through my program and then uh, working as a transcriptionist. So, hi, Robin. Hi, Ginger. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. So um, we're going to dive right into the um, into these questions, and um, I'm not sure everything I'm going to ask you, but I kind of have a an outline. But uh, if if questions pop up, we'll just um, we'll uh, address them as we go along. Does that sound okay? That sounds great. Okay. So uh, the first thing I want to ask you is where are you located? I'm in um, Alexandria, Virginia. I'm about ten miles outside of Washington D.C. Oh wow, you're in a political world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're right smack dab in the middle of it um and if you don't mind me asking um what's your age i'm 58 you're 58 okay um all right so tell me a, a little bit about your background well um i um am a former archivist i, I worked um um, after I got out of college, I pretty much became an archivist, which means I deal with record, dealt with records um, in different institutions. Okay. And um, the bulk of my work was in the federal government and uh, where I retired from uh, back in 2019. Okay. So you did that for a long time? I did. I did it for 30 years, at, okay. not at the same place, but. Right, right. Wow. Okay. So that was a, that was a real career. It wasn't a job. It was, um, that was a complete career. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So you retired in 2019. Uh, one day you're online. Did you see a Facebook ad or something like that about my program that uh, got your attention? I did. I did. Um, that's exactly what happened. I saw the I saw the ad and I clicked on it and um, signed up for your course pretty much right away. This was about a year. It was last May or June of 2021. Okay. And what was it? Did you look at other programs too, or did you only look at mine? I only looked at yours and okay. I liked what I saw. So yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. So um what drew you to um, to the program or to tra to learning transcription? Well, when I had been working as an archivist, a lot of times I was in history offices where they would do uh, oral history interviews. Historians would talk to pe people, either former staff or people of interest. So I had been around that world a little bit and always thought it'd be really cool to um, the transcription part of it. Um, so that's kind of what drew me to it. And with your course at the, at the time, um, when I signed up for it, um, I had just lost my husband back in 2020 and, um, I, you know, I had retired. So I, it was kind of smack in the middle of COVID. I didn't want to go out and find a job. I wanted something right. to from home. And right. so I thought this is perfect because it's, you know, the course is, is online and for, I can do it from home. Um, and then when I decided that I wanted to start my business, I, I was happy that I could do that from home as well. Oh, um, wow. So wow. So you were juggling a whole lot of balls at the same time, but at the same time, you got to do it from home. So you could kind of regulate yourself um, when it came to being involved with other people and setting the pace of, you know, dealing with your life and learning something new at the same time. Yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, well, oh, I, you know, I, I had a good career and I had a wonderful marriage and, and, you know, my, our plans had been that my husband had actually retired in 2015 and I was supposed to retire in 2021. And then we were going to move down to Charlottesville and retire, but then in 2018, he got sick and that kind of oh. rearranged our plans. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, so, yeah. But, um, but I'm doing good. And I'm, I'm in, I, we were in a townhouse, which was awful because it had so many stairs, both inside and out. And Ivan was falling all the time. So um, while he was sick, actually, I think one of his trips to the hospital, I moved us into a condo with an elevator and no stairs. Oh, nice. I'm about a mile down the road from my mother who's in assisted living. So it's a good location where I am now. And, and so, um, 
Um, I'll eventually probably move down to Charlottesville because I have family down there. But for now, for now, this is good. And it's great, too, because with the business, if I move, it's OK. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't change as far as your work goes. It doesn't matter where you're sitting. You can do the exact same thing from anywhere. Absolutely. Yes. That's definitely one of my favorite things about this is my parents live in Virginia and I can go see them take my work with me. I can go visit uh, my daughter in Asheville, take my work with me. And it's just never interrupted. And I mean, it's, it's and if you work on a laptop, that's true. If you work on a desktop, it can kind of mess you up, but a uh, laptop can go with you. It's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, when you got into the program, how did you feel about the program itself? Did you receive everything that you needed? Uh, did you find it understandable? Yeah, I did. Um, uh, I got, you know, your foot, foot pedal and, and the books. Um, and um, the funny part was my husband was a computer. His career was computers. And so we had tons of computers here. <laughs> so I, did, I didn't have to go out and buy anything. I had I have two standalone Macs. Um, I have a Mac. Um, uh, laptop I have. Uh, and so um, it worked out great because the the software that you recommend the, the Express Scribe it is Mac compatible as well. Right. Um, right. And, uh, so yeah, I was able so I have this system where I transcribe on the big computer uh, on my big Mac. And then when I go to for to edit and format, um, I do it on my laptop. So it kind of Oh, nice. Up a little bit. Um, do, do you think that that helps you with proofreading? Just simply seeing it, you know, doing it in a different place and seeing it on a different screen? Yes, absolutely. It really does. Yes. I think that's amazing. I hadn't even, I've told people often, you know, walk away and then come back. But I don't think I've ever said, you know, go to a different computer. Of course, I mean, a lot of people only have one computer. So that's probably why I didn't think of that. But um, that's amazing that you can do that. And sometimes the sound is a little different too. So if there's words that I'm not able to pick up on, on the big computer, sometimes I'm able to on the laptop. So it helps break things up a little bit that right. way. Right. Okay. So as you were going through the program, um, what did you, what did you consider the most valuable as far as actually going through the program? Well, the exercises were fantastic be because of the recordings and, and different people and different accents. And, and it I think it really prepares you for the variety that you're not just going to get a perfect, <laughs> a perfect audio person uh, that you're able to transcribe that it, it kind of it gives you the variety that you're going to get when you're working. Um, but also your accessibility is huge. Um, um, I think you, I think I had way more calls with you <laughs> than were included in the program. You were so good to me. And, um, cause I was having trouble with punctuation and, um, some of the beginning and endings of sentences. And so you really helped me, help me through that. Do you think the, the coaching calls help with, uh, seeing blind spots? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest things about them too. people who enroll in programs where it's completely do it yourself. Um, it's difficult because you don't know what you don't know. And it's important to have somebody there to say, you know, you miss this because you do, we don't, by definition, we have blind spots and we can't, we don't know what we don't know. So that's why I offer all the coaching calls. Um, and the accessibility, because I know how important that is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so how long would you say it took you to get through the program? <clears throat> um, it took me, let's see, I, I signed up last May, June. It took me pretty much through almost the end of the year. Um, uh, and it wasn't like I was working on it eight hours a day every day because I, I, I wasn't. I, right. Um, but um, uh, so then I guess it was in November, October, November was when you, you told me you thought I was ready to, to go ahead and, and find work. So um, in November was when um, I 
uh, Wix, I know, was one of the, one of the vendors that you recommended um, uh, as a as a uh, web hosting site. I got in touch with them, and I was originally going to do my own website because I'd done it many years ago, but it's mm-hmm. changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> So um, they had some vendors you could hire. And so I hired this very nice young lady who was a student, actually. And she did my website for me because I wanted to be I, I kind of did it backwards. I kind of wanted a website first so that when I started my business, I'd have a, something to point to. Right. For, for right. And um, so in so hindsight, did you need the website before you started working? I think so. I think so. I think it was a really good thing to be able to point people to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, they didn't necessarily know how many clients I had, if I had any, cause at that point, right. right. Well, at least I could point them somewhere. Right. I understand. Okay. Let, let's back up for a second. Did you know when you enrolled that you were going to want to start your own business or did you go, come into it thinking I'm going to get a job and then change your mind and say, never mind, I'm going to start my own business. Um, I kind of was just on the fence. I really didn't know what I wanted to do because I, I think I would have maybe if COVID hadn't happened, maybe I would have, you know, thought about more, more about going out and getting a job with somebody. Um, of course, I know that you can still work remotely from home, but right. then I saw that um, you would put information on there uh, of the rates compared to you working for somebody else and you working for yourself. It's a big difference. <laughs> it's a huge, huge difference. Huge. Okay. So you decided to start your own business. You created a website. Um, at that point, I didn't even offer help with that kind of thing. I do now, but at the time you enrolled, I, I just kind of pointed you in the direction to do that kind of stuff, but I didn't actually do any help with, um, you know, setting up a domain or any of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, how long did it take you to go from completing the program to actually getting paid work? Um, I'd say it was about two months. I'm, let's see, about two, one and a half to two months. Okay, um, so not very long, six to eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, though, the first job I got was through my old boss. She had kind of, when I, when I, uh, uh, just announced that I was starting my own business. I posted a post on Facebook and Mm -hmm. she shared it. Um, and a friend of hers had a job for me. It wasn't the, the most ideal job because it was actually cleaning up and somebody else's transcript, which Uh I don't recommend doing. And I know you told me. I always do. Yeah. (laughs) You'll have to pay me more to clean up a transcript than to do it from scratch. Yeah. And, um, so, I know not to do that again, but, um, so yeah, that was like a month and a half into, uh, I kind of unveiled in January, the new year, um, with the business and, uh, yeah, it wasn't long after probably about a month, um, before I got my first job. Okay. So when you set your rates, what did you decide? Uh, how did you set your rates? Um, I kind of looked around some initially, um, and, uh, uh, I think in the, in the very beginning, I, you know, was just trying to be competitive. So I charged, I think it was a dollar 50 per audio minute, which I know is really, really low. <laughs> and even though I had all the additional fees, um, I think I borrowed from your, from your website of, of things to add on like timestamps and difficult audio and that sort mm-hmm. of thing, mm-hmm. because I was trying to just drum up business. I was telling people, well, it's a dollar 50 per audio minute you know, for now, you know, um, and so, uh, uh, and people seemed okay. People seemed okay with that. I think, cause they didn't really understand how, how it worked anyway. In right. Terms. Um, so yeah. So did you keep your rate at that? Did you keep it at a dollar 50 to this day or did you, did you, um, raise it over time? Um, I've raised it over time for the most part. It, it had been two dollars. I raised it to, and then just recently I upped it to two fifty. Awesome! Um, so <laughs> nice, nice. I'm glad to hear that because a dollar fifty that's a really low price, especially if you're you know creating custom templates and you know and doing lots of other things. So I'm glad you definitely raised your price. That was good. 
Absolutely. <laughs> um, so this is this is your plan. You're going to stick. Oh, tell people um, what kind of stuff do you transcribe? How did how did you did you choose one niche, or did you do you do a little bit of everything? What do you? Well, when I started, I, I actually sent out emails first because I was interested in doing podcasts, mm -hmm. and I wasn't getting any work from that. Either people had them already, or they just weren't interested. And so my, my ultimate goal was to, to transcribe his, um, oral history interviews like I had experienced when I was working. Um, right. um, but I guess I felt I felt tentative because I, I felt I didn't want to be like, hey, I can do that now when I wasn't, I was still kind of green. <laughs> right. So, um, but anyway, I just, I started sending out emails to former contacts I had when I was an archivist and that's how I was starting to get some jobs. So um, I've gotten a few different universities had projects that I was able to do. Um, one project was on unfair housing in um, Kentucky. Oh, wow. Uh, and another one was about um, staff that used to work at Churchill Downs, older okay. staff. Mm -hmm. And then another project was uh, staff of former uh, congressmen and senators um, in Georgia. So um, it's re really been interesting. And then a, an organization I used to belong to, which um, consists of archivists and historian, political, politically based, um, had their annual conferences on Zoom because of the pandemic. Right. And they wanted to be able to post um, minutes. They didn't want to post videos of the sessions. They just wanted to post the, the transcripts. So they hired me to do to the two years of sessions of those, which was really great. Oh, that's amazing. I bet they wanted timestamps on those. So you got to charge a little extra for that too. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> wow. That, I mean, that's just like a world away from what I do, you know, with my transcription business, but that's one of the things I love most about this is that you, whatever your area of expertise is, or your interests are, that's what you can go transcribe. I mean, you don't, you don't have to do anything and everything. You can, you can uh, be picky. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's really been great. And, um, and it's, it, and it just being at home, it's just so wonderful having, you know, they send, they upload their audio or video file on Dropbox. I get it. I transcribe it. I put the transcriptions on Dropbox. They send me payment through, you know, pretty much I tell them I can accept things anyway. So right. some are Venmo, PayPal, um, Zell, we, you know, it, it, it varies. Um, and um, now I'm trying to get in to, as a vendor with the federal government. So I'm hoping that that that'll open up maybe some more um, venues uh, as well, um, especially being a woman owned business. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. Are you if that were to happen, would you consider uh, hiring people to help you like a uh, uh, independent contractors to work as transcriptionists under you or to help you? Um, well, I didn't, I, I kind of wanted to just be on my own for, for a while and not have to, to do that. I guess right. it would depend on if it was a really big project and, and I just, I wanted to do it, but there was no way I could do it by myself. But right. Um, for right now, I kind of want to just, you know, um, worry about myself as an employee. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't hire anybody at first either. So, but eventually you reach the place where, I mean, you're only one person, so mm -hmm. you can only transcribe so many hours a day, but if you have, you know, two other people transcribing the same time you're transcribing, then you can make, you know, a good bit more money without it being a lot more work. Sure. Absolutely. So, but anyway, just something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> So do you have any advice for someone who may be thinking about, um, you know, becoming a transcriptionist or starting a transcription business or enrolling in uh, one of my programs? Well, I just tell them to do it. I mean, um, I think it was so worth the money. And, um, and even if maybe you don't decide to go 
you know, work for somebody else or start your own business, I think it's a good skill to have. And um, it, it could turn into something else. You just don't know. Um, and like you said, there's so many, a variety of, you know, uh, venues you can go to with, you know, podcasts and whatnot. Right. Um, I even transcribed for two graduate students who were working on their, actually uh, uh, working on their, their um, theses and they had like interviews. One guy said he usually used um, a, a software for transcription, mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. well, very good. And it would take him a long time to go and correct. And so he just didn't have the time. So he hired me to do it for him. Um, and another gal who was also, um, this was for her, her thesis and she had an interview that she needed a lot faster than, than she could do. So that was right. kind of interesting too. Um, I think venues you just, you don't even think about. Oh yeah. For, I, I, even me, I have a sermon transcription business. But yet somehow, some way, some guy who makes YouTube videos on selling seed to farmers found me <laughs> <laughs> and we transcribed his stuff. And I'm like, how did you, how did you even find me? This is crazy. But uh, I love that. I mean, I like my niche. I like staying where I'm in my comfort zone, but it's still fun when somebody just kind of comes from out of nowhere and says, I know that's not really your thing, but will you help me? Um, it's kind of, it's fun to say yes to those sometimes too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But your course was wonderful. It really was. And, and, you know, having, having you be so interactive and everything is, is, is I think probably what sets it apart from other courses. I'm sure that you, you don't have the interaction with the person that created the course and, um, in other, in other, uh, courses. So, I think that's huge. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I usually tell people who are on the fence about it because they'll say, you know, what's included. And I tell them most of the time, it's not what, it's not the course itself. It's not the practice files. It's not the foot pedal I send you or the software. What you're really paying for is me. You're mm -hmm. paying to get all this stuff that's inside of my head <laughs> into your head so that you don't have to go and try to figure things out on your own and you don't have to, you know, feel scared and alone through the process. Um, I love just being there. I love that, you know, no matter what your question is, even though you've been out of the program for over a year now, if you had a question, you could easily reach out to me and say, Hey, what do I do here? And, um, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> well, I've just enjoyed it too. I feel like, and, and I love, I, I don't, I'm not always um, there in person for the weekly sessions, um, but I do watch them afterwards a lot of times and um, seeing you and the other students uh, and even former students interacting with questions is so valuable and helpful. And um, I, I, you know, that it, so it continues on. The yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for people who are watching those who don't know what we're talking about, um, if you're in my program, then once a week, there are live uh, uh, Q and A sessions where we literally get on a zoom call like this and anybody who wants to join can join. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask, or you can just sit and listen to other people ask their questions or maybe offer answers yourself. And then all the calls are recorded and uh, whoever couldn't make it can go back and watch each of the Q and A's. So that's what you're talking about. Even when you don't show up and you watch them, you benefit from them. Yes, very much so, very much so. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that because I never know, well, you don't really know how many people are watching them. If people don't show up, it's hard to tell, you know, who's watching them, who, you know, is this helpful? <laughs> so yes, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad that you're, um, still watching them and benefiting from them. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I, I can't, I, I think you answered all of my questions. Is there, do you, is there any, uh, any parting wisdom or. Oh gosh, I just say, go, you know, go for it. I mean, even if um, you don't end up um, being a transcriptionist or I, I think it's a valuable to, a skill to learn. And um, I think it gives you a whole new sense of um, 
uh, like when I watch TV now in terms of <laughs> if I see closed <laughs> captions, <laughs> you know, you start like going there. Um, Proof I, reading I in your head all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, I think it's, and I think it's well worth the money, even if you don't end up making it a career, it's definitely worth, worth, uh, worth going into to looking at. Right. Right. Well, thank you so much, Robin. I am so grateful to you for uh, taking the time to share your experience and for, you know, giving other people a little bit of insight on the program me and the field in general. So um, thank you very much. And I will uh, talk to you again soon. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye.